Hi, this is teacher Jennifer. I'm here with Dr. Hernandez and we're going to be doing a practice interview. Let's get started. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, may I have your appointment letter? My appointment letter. One minute, please. This is my appointment letter. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Officer Bowen. How are you today? Uh, fine. I'm fine. I'm a little bit nervous. That's okay. We're going to, you'll be okay. Uh, it's nervous is normal, so don't worry about it. Follow me. Okay, thank you. Uh, come, come, come. You're going to come into my office, and I'd like you to sit down, please. Thank you. Okay, and I'd like you to put your purse and your folder on that chair beside you. Okay, it's right here. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and I need you to turn off your cell phone, please. My cell phone? Mm -hmm. Can Not I use a Can Not I use a translator? Not just no. turn it. No, uh, you can't turn it down. You have to turn it off. Can I record this interview? No, you may not. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but what if I get a very important cell phone, a very important call? No. Sorry, okay. we're in the middle of an interview. Can't be, can't be interrupted. Sorry. Okay. So now I am turning off my cell phone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now please stand up, all right, and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. All right, sit down. All right, you know, I, uh, go ahead and put your hand down and go ahead and take a seat. Yeah, I'd like to see your green card, your ID, and all your passports. Will you pass those to me, please? Okay, so this one, oh, here. This one is my green card. Uh huh. I'm going to take that, yes. Okay, this one. This one is my passport. Wonderful. You only have one passport? Yes, I only have one passport. Okay, because expired ones you would bring as well. No, I don't have any expired passports. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one, this last one is my photo ID. Excellent. All right. I'm going to take these and make copies over here. Have okay. a, <laughs> a Xerox machine. <coughs> okay. <coughs> All right. Here you Thank go. You. I'm returning your, you. your items here. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're going to start with the civics questions. Oh, okay. You ready? Yes. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Don't worry. All right, what's the capital of California? The capital of California is Sacramento. Good. Very nice. And can you name the two major political parties? The two major political parties are the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Very good, very good. All right. Uh, when do men need to register for selective service? Men need to register for selective service between their 18th and 26th birthday. Very nice, very nice. And who lived in America before the Europeans arrived? The American li Indians lived in America before the Europeans arrived. Oh, very nice. During the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? Uh, the main concern of the United States during the Cold War was communism. Very nice. Communism. All right. We got one more to go. And if you get this one right, we'll switch. We'll yes. finish this section. What are the two parts of Congress? The two parts of Congress, let me think. The two parts of Congress are the Senate and the House, the House of Representatives. Very nice job. Very nice job. Very nice job. Okay. I'd like you to look at the tablet, right? We're going to do your reading. Okay. And can you read what is what appears in the tablet for you to read there? Please go ahead. Okay. Here's the dictation. Mm -hmm. the, the president lives in the White House. My handwriting is not very good. 
That's not a problem. It's very difficult on with the stylus and on the tablet. So we're used to that. <laughs> Okay, here it is. The can you see it? Uh, the lift it up, lift it up now, and that's too much. Lift it down a little. The president lives in. The, oh, nice job! Very good. Thank you. Excellent. All right, now for the reading, would you read the question to that answer? Oh, here it is. Uh, who lives in the White House? Very nice. The Very president nice. lives in the White House. Excellent Thank you. job. Sorry about that. All right. That. So we have uh, your civics questions. You passed over there. You did fine on the um, dictation and on the reading. Now we're going to proceed to your application. Okay, great. All right. So can you tell me your name, please? My name is Guadalupe Rios Garcia. All right, very good. And what's your address? My address is 1331 Schaefer Drive, Milpitas, California, 95035. Very nice. And do you have any children? Yes, I have one child. Okay, and can you tell me what is the name of this child? Her name is Carmen. Carmen. And her date of birth? Carmen's date of birth is February 7th, 2001. She was born one day after my birthday. She Aww. is my late birthday present. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And are you working? Yes, I am working. All right, and what do you do? Uh, I, am, um, I am a house cleaner. Okay, here on the application, it says you're a seamstress. So oh, I I'm going. Yes, I am also a seamstress. That is my second job. I have two jobs. Okay, so I'm going to add your housekeeper position here so that we right. have everything correct on your application. Okay? Right. Now it's very difficult to be a house cleaner, but I'm a very good seamstress. So very I good. do a lot of uh, sewing. Excellent. Now tell me, what's your social security number? It's a secret. Is it okay to tell you? Yes, you need to tell me. I'm going to okay. be checking it with what I have here on your application. Okay, so it's 550-556198. Excellent. Very good. It's exactly what we have here. Okay. And tell us, uh, tell me what is your telephone number? Uh, my phone number is 408-555-2846. Excellent. Coincides. And tell me, what is your mar marital status? I am married. And what's the name of your husband? Uh, my hu husband's name is Bruno Garcia. All right. Very good. And when was the last time you left the United States? The last time I left the United States was uh, December, December the 17th, 2019. And I returned January the 7th, 2020. And where did you go? I went to Mexico. I went to visit my family. Very nice. Okay. And how many total trips have you made in the last five years? Uh, I've gone to Mexico uh, 12 times. All right. But it looks like you're staying under the two and a half year rule. The, yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I go for only a short time mm -hmm. and sometimes I go to see the doctor. Ah, okay. Probably then you just cross the border here. Yeah, yeah. Only one day, one day. Very good. Okay, we're going to start part 12. I'm going to ask you the have, uh, let's see. So here we go. Have you ever claimed to be a U.S. citizen? No, I have not. And have you ever registered to vote in any federal, state, or local election in the United States? No. Have you ever voted in any federal, state, or local election in the United States? No, I have not. And do you now have, or did you ever have, a hereditary title or an order of nobility in any foreign country? No, no. Have you ever been declared legally incompetent or been confined to a mental institution? No, I have not. Do you owe any overdue federal, state, or local taxes? 
No, I pay my taxes on time. All right, and do you do your taxes? Yes, I do my taxes. Very it's, good. It's good with with the new computer programs. It's okay. Before I went to uh, people to take care of it, but then they're just looking at the machine. I said I can look at a machine too. <laughs> Sounds good. I look at a sewing machine, I look at a computer, same thing. <laughs> Very good. They're a little bit different, but you're right. They're both no, machines. Some, some, some sewing machines, nice sewing machines, they have a computer. Computer. Inside. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I like Especially sewing. Especially for too. embroidery. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Have you ever committed, uh, assisted in committing or attempted to commit a crime or offense for which you were not arrested? No. I have not committed any crimes. Have you ever been arrested, cited, or detained by any law enforcement officer, including immigration official or any officer of the armed forces for any reason? No, I have not been arrested. I have never been arrested. Very good. Uh, all right, I'm just going to continue. Have you ever been charged with committing, attempting to commit, or assisting in committing a crime or offense? No, I have never committed a crime. Good. All right. I'm going to skip this one about conviction because you've just told me that you haven't. And I can see by your fingerprints that you indeed have not. Uh, let me see. I'm going to skip over here. Have you ever lied to the U.S. government to gain entry or admission into the United States or to gain immigration benefits while in the United States? No, I have never lied to get into the United States or to get public benefits. All right. And uh, have you ever been removed, excluded, or deported from the United States? No, I have never been deported. All oh, right. that's terrible. It's sad. It's sad. And have you ever been ordered, removed, excluded, or deported from the United States? No, I have never been ordered to be de deported. All right. Um, have you ever served in the U.S. Armed Forces? No, I have never served in the U.S. Armed Forces. All right. And do you support the Constitution and form of government of the United States? Yes, I support the Constitution. Do you understand the full oath of allegiance to the United States? Yes, I, I understand the full oath of allegiance. Are you willing to take the full oath of allegiance to the United States? Yes, I am. And if the law requires it, are you willing to bear arms on behalf of the United States? Yes, I am willing to bear arms on behalf of the United States. Excellent. If the law requires it, are you willing to perform non-combatant services in the U.S. Armed Forces? Yes, I'm willing to. I am willing to do non-combatant service in the American Armed Forces. Nice. And if the law requires it, are you willing to perform work of national importance under civilian direction? Yes, I'm willing to perform uh, work of national importance. So, for example, I'm a so I'm a seamstress. I can sew uniforms. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, it sounds like you are prepared. You have passed this yeah. part of the uh, in, of the uh, application. This is the English part, and we've checked your application. It looks like it's fine. You've passed the six of. Uh, of the civics questions. You've done your uh, dictation and your reading. So I'm happy to say congratulations to you. Congratulations to you for doing an excellent interview. And Thank I'm you gonna so ask much. You, I'm going to ask you here in Los Angeles, I'm going to ask you to step back to the waiting room and wait. It'll take us a, uh, about an hour here to repair your certificate and then call you and we will then uh have you sworn in today yes ma'am i become a citizen today yes yes you're gonna go wow, back to the waiting room i'm so happy i have to tell everybody now i'm an american <laughs> citizen okay thank you so much well, wait until you get your certificate okay <laughs> it's, it's been a pleasure speaking with you and you did a great job okay thank you so much bye bye sure. bye bye, bye. What were we going to do? There were a couple of other items that we were going to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have two uh, report backs from my students, but tell me the, your good news. Oh, the most amazing news. 
Um, I have a student who studied with me from in 2018 and 2019. And she was a lovely person and she had a child who was two years old at that time. And her husband came down with cancer. <gasps> And so she didn't come to class anymore right, because course. she needed to, to take care of her husband right. and also to her two-year-old. So I have, over the year, you know, I've just sent her occasional updates on what we're doing in class. And out of the blue, two days ago, I received a text from her saying, I have received, I'm gonna cry. I have received my interview notice, my oh. appointment letter. And not only that, but think, I hadn't seen her since 2000, uh, either early 2019. It's been a very long time. Mm. And I had sent home, she had from class, uh, the, the vocabulary. I have a vocabulary worksheet. And uh, she had some words that she didn't know. Uh, she had left blank. I, on the worksheet, I put the definition and their job is to put the word that's on the application, right? So she had left blank discrimination, which on the application means persecution. She had left blank believe, which is the word advocate. She had left blank Adolf Hitler, which is the word Nazi. Uh, and she had left, oh, one other word that I can't remember. But sh what she had done, as she had taken a picture of her homework and she had said in her text, there's some words that I didn't know the answer to. Could you please give them to me? And then uh, all of this, and I want you to know, can, do you want to take a guess at what time the text was prepared? Oh, maybe about midnight or two o'clock in the morning. Two, two, two fifty in the morning. She was wow. nursing her newborn because she had been pregnant she had given birth and of course life is really crazy even more crazy and uh but it was just you know where you know where we think that things are hard then you think about people who keep going she just kept going she's got you know imagine that she has to answer me at 2 50 in the morning to get a moment her her text was a long text she but. can also watch the video that you made with the we did one that uh, that um handout oh that's you can right. send yeah. her that email I'll, I'll i'll send you the the link perfect perfect okay so I will I, be it was a lovely story yes yes and we're gonna pray for her husband because we're hoping that he's gonna hang in there because mm -hmm. it's been a year now since he was diagnosed and he had wow. begun immediately uh chemo and so wow, um, I'm sorry to hear she that. had a couple of questions she said um, and these will be important I think for for people who are listening she said teacher should I indicate that I have a newborn and I turned around and I said yes ma'am this is this is what the officer is there for that to indicate uh, you know that you have had a new member of your family I suggested to her that she write on a piece of paper the name of the child, the birth date, so that she can just hand that over to the officer and they're going to have that there and they can use that to add. She could and, take a photo of the birth certificate too. All right. And then the other thing that she asked me, she said, since I sent my application last year, I've been out of the country twice. Should I mention that? And I said, yeah. I'm sure that they will know that but on a piece of paper, write that information. So about each of the trips, when did you go? When did you come back? Where did you go? And how many days were you gone? Do it for both of the trips. And that way you're all set because I'm sure that the officer will ask you, <laughs> the officer will know well, about it. Well, the other thing is, is that maybe right now the officers do not want to receive physical paper. So you may also might want to prepare oh, okay. it as okay. an email and you can say, I can email you the information. Or no, maybe what I'll do is I'll suggest that she write it on her cell phone, nice and big. So, In other yeah. words, like you make a note. No, I'm glad that you said that. Yeah. I will text her now and say, no, we don't want to send paper. Uh, that's exactly right. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Or and she can write a piece of paper, take the photo, and then she can show the officer. Exactly. Okay. Can bring but both what I need to them. do is prepare her for the fact that they won't receive the paper. And no. that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Although it's interesting that they do receive, you know, all the documents. They're they're kind of required to receive those. Right. But, uh, 
Yeah, but they go through a... But it was a heartwarming story in the sense that, as I say, we had kept in contact. She had not been able to attend since 2000, early 2019, I think. Uh, so it's been a year and a half. And occasionally she would, she sends me a text. And so I know that she's at the other end of that text, right at the other end there. But, uh, and this was out of the blue. And that's how, that's how it is. You know, with new moms, that's, you know, you're busy and the time that you get is going to be, you know, when you're nursing your child and you're sitting down and you're, you have a minute to do something on the phone, you know. Well, I think this is also such a good, this is such a good story of hope, especially during COVID-19. You know, despite COVID-19 and lockdowns, people still get cancer, babies are still born. Exactly, so, um, yeah. And keep, there's, there's women who are always trying to keep both ends together, so... I just so will true. really prepare for your, for, uh, remember your student. So the two stories that I had, I had one student from Guatemala who, um, who passed her citizenship uh, earlier this week. The one thing that she said when she came back is when she went in, she had a mask, she was wearing a mask with air vents in it. That is forbidden. So any mask with air vents in them, or air ma uh, mask with bandana, or it has to be a real mask. And with it has no... to be a real mask. Okay, with... like a surgical mask. Like yeah. a surgical mask. Okay. So okay, but I will. Work. I will take note of that. Hello, I'm going to take note of that. That they can't have vents in there. I think that's important for so, us to underscore here. Sorry. Let me right. let me uh, let me show you the surgical mask. Surgical mask. Yeah, and no bandanas. Yeah which I, I so knew, the, but I, I hadn't underscored. And so I so these kind of masks are All are great. okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, well, these are disposable, but you could also wear a, a, a cloth one. Yeah, but it can't be these ones with yes, air like in the middle the here, cloth. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's can't one be in the that middle. one, and it can't be this one. Well, there are a bunch here that have that. So can't be this other one, the baklava or whatever it says over there. Yeah. Yeah, it can't, can't be that one. It has to be a standard mask and they'll be looking at you. They'll be looking uh, at you. Uh, now these, they won't let you no. in the building. So, yeah. Now, they fortunately, they did have some uh, extra masks, but you can't depend on that. Yeah, and you no. can't, don't yeah. want to say that, no. oh, I can't go to my citizenship interview because I did, wasn't wearing the right mask. So... That's the, the, the thing that you want to do. You know, about. and the other thing that the guard will do is, at least in Los Angeles, they have written on a board in English and in Spanish the questions about COVID-19. COVID have you been exposed? Have you been feeling any symptoms? Have you been tested? I see that that's now. Anyway, so um, the guard points to the to the questions and, and the student then has to answer yes or no. So Okay. So that's that's really important. Now Interesting, the, the person that I, I'm sorry, just give me one, one other thing. The person that, uh, that I based my interview on for you, uh, when she went in, she had to take off her shoes when she did the... We uh, have to do that in San Jose. Okay. Yeah. Well, it doesn't always happen. It just, it means that because I've been through there, normally I have to take off my barrette, but I am a, I'm usually able to take my shoes in, but it just means that there was metal in the shoes and so, or in the in the heels or someplace. And so right. they needed to, to, yeah. So in her case, she had to take them off. So, okay. So the second, the second tip that I have uh, was one of my students uh, from San Francisco, he um, uh, married his wife uh, in India, came over here um, when, and then applied for citizenship mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. There's three stepchildren involved. So she had children. He basically takes the mom and supports them and everything like that. So when he went for his interview, it was almost like he was going through a green card interview again. They asked him all these questions about how they met. They wanted yeah, to see yeah. pictures of them together. And this person is a devout Muslim. He's not carrying around random pictures of his wife without her without her veil on and stuff like that. Okay, so it was problematic, and eventually he ends up contacting using his cell phone to contact uh, his wife 
I believe he had to do it in the, the waiting room, and she was able to send pictures of them together. Now, again, most of the time she was, she was masked up, okay? But a lot of times that's something to be aware of. They want to see a whole progression of pictures of the relationship. So they just don't want the wedding picture and now you're here. They want to see a whole series of pictures. So and that's, that's like a green card interview. That's old, interesting. Yeah. yeah because uh, they're going to have to, you know, uh, he's trying to become a citizen. But I'm sure after that, he'll try and get a green card for his wife. And that's no, what she was the citizen. She had been a citizen I see. for a long time. Yeah. Almost, you know, 20 years, right? But it was almost as if he had to go through the green card uh, interview again. So he's wondering if it if it was because he was married to her, uh, if it was if it was because they it, it was a it was um, he got his eligibility based on marriage, or did he say is it a, a example of, uh, of Islamophobia or well, whatever the case? How many? I, but, how many years had they, uh, uh, hold on, how many years, he made the application after three or five years? Three years. Well, they're always going to, so, uh, you know, always. They they're have gonna, been married five years, yeah. Right, but <laughs> if it's based on the, uh, it was based on the fact that they had been married three, in other words, yes, or five? Yes. No, they had, he, his. They had been married five years. He had been a resident for four years. Oh, okay. So his eligibility is based on three yeah. years. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, and she oh. had been uh, a citizen for many, many years. Right. So, and always in those cases, though, whenever you're asking for uh, to be, you know, in other words, to be naturalized or no, yes, naturalized uh, in the less than the five years, then they always ask for more documents. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Normally... See, normally what I tell my students is they ask for financial documents. Yes, and he was able to pro provide those doc mm -hmm. documents, but the this officer particularly was yeah. focused in on the pictures. He really wanted to That's see very the rare. Normally yeah. that's done at the green card interview, and then and normally at this interview they need to see so where, where said, their shared resources, you know. So he said the whole process took about an hour and a half. Whoop. He said one thing. That was at his advantage was that in um, previously um, yeah, when he, when he was in India he fixed cell phones. You have to be very patient when you do that. And now he's doing uh, driving in San Francisco. Okay, <laughs> again you have to be very 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 patient and always be awake. And he said he never changed his response. He was and he said that he felt that the officer was getting angry and he was just. Calm, calm and smile calm, yeah no i calm. tell my students the same you can, yeah. yeah you're the one that's going to lose if you get all upset you're going to be the lose and did he come away with the green card he, uh, with he the came away with his citizenship so that's he that was waited, worth the hour and a half oh, yes and then he had his papers in hand he was so happy so nice. later on in the afternoon he called me from his office his the front seat of his car he says i have my citizenship paper <laughs> I am driving in San Francisco. I love America. So anyway, nice. that's my good, good story. My good yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I think the moral is always, you know, the student always needs to remain calm, smile, be pleasant, right? Uh, even though it's a maddening situation, you, you, you need to remain calm and be pleasant at all times. Yeah, and in and the he, end, even though it lasted an hour and a half, he came away with his citizenship. So... Well, he That's, said that, that the key. officer asked the questions, some, most of the questions, two or three times. The reason why is I think the officer wants to see, will the person change, get nervous and change their answers? And if you're telling the truth, you're going to remain calm. And say, say the same the thing. Yeah. Same thing, or maybe add a little bit more mm -hmm. as the officer requests. Don't volunteer information, but answer right. Simply and clearly, and that's the that's the key. So that was why that he's successful, and that's why he's an American citizen today. So that's a lovely story too. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that he had to go through the hour and a half, but the best part is that he came out with uh, being a being a citizen. So well, I don't think the officer was trying to be a jerk. Okay, and I don't think he was on a power trip or anything like that. I think the officers in this situation they're trying to be careful. 
And um, so uh, it's stressful enough in their job. They're having difficulty with how many people and the scheduling and COVID-19 oh, yeah. and all the safety and all the things stress. they have to yeah. remember. Mm -hmm. So the fact that my student was able to remain calm helped the officer to do his job that much more. That's a really good story. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, anything, anything final that you want to say? No. no. Hey, it's been nice to see you. Good luck to all of <laughs> our, our colleagues out there and students. And just like these students were success stories, your story will be successful too. Oh, one more. You're going to be at um, Katisa, right? Coming yes. up. What day is that? October? Oh, it, it, the conference is from the 8th to the 11th, but I'm on the Friday the 9th at 3.30. Okay, great. So we'll look forward to seeing oh, you thank then. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Have a really great day. Bye-bye.